Okay, everyone, hello. Uh, my name is Gabby, and we are just starting cohort three of the book club of the book called Digiplot 2. So, this is the third cohort for that, um, for that book club. And we're very excited. It's a very long book, but there hasn't been a cohort in a while. I think a couple of years or something like that. I'm not really sure exactly. So, that's exciting. Um, so I am going to go through the introduction. So the first chapter, let me share my screen. Right, there you go. So I am going to go over um, the main part of this introduction for the book. Let me just show you, I think. Let me change my sharing things. Okay. So this is the book that we're going to be working on. Uh, the one that's printed is the second edition. But apparently they're working on the third edition. So this is the work in progress of this third edition, which is kind of exciting. They also have a little um, disclaimer here on the introduction that says that you're reading the work in pro progress third edition of the Ggplot 2 book. This chapter is currently a dumping ground for ideas and we don't recommend reading it, but we're going to do it because we're rebels. And let's see what little gems we can find in here from those, um, you know, new ideas that they're introducing here. Because um, I don't know if we can access actually the second edition unless we have it printed, but if it's just like the online version, this is the one that we have. Um, so I want to remind everyone that uh, on the Slack uh, channel, we have all the links on the top part. Let me put that here. So this is the Slack. And above here, you're going to see that you have links for the book, the shared slides, uh, the GitHub repository, the YouTube playlists with um, the previous cohort. And there's another one sometimes hidden that's called Claim a Chapter. So this one is very important so that um, you can sign up here for the chapter that you want to present. So I'm here on the first one. All the chapters have slides except the last one, which is called a case study. So that's the only one that doesn't have any slides. So based on this calendar, we're going to start now in July and end up in December approximately. We only have one break. Uh, in the middle of October for uh, the daylight savings transition. Um, so that's good. But we can also schedule in more pauses or more uh, breaks if, we, if there's like, a, I don't know, a big uh, conference happening and you guys feel like half of you are not going to be here and you'd rather we skip a week or something. Obviously, we can also uh, modify that a little bit. Um, so remember to sign up here for the following chapters. And I'm going to sort of go through all of them today so that we can understand what they are. Um, so let's begin. So the way, so today I'm going to present. Um, and I'm also going to go through a little bit of how I recommend you guys uh, do and present your chapters. It's just a guideline. Obviously, this is. Um, you can you can do whatever feels best for you. Um, and for me, at least when I'm presenting, if you guys want to say something in the chat, I'm always paying attention to the chat. But if you also want to just unmute yourselves and ask a question, or especially if you have bits of, um, I don't know, gems of information, right? Like little bits of things that, oh, I know, I also know how to do this cool thing, or... Uh, regarding the question that you just asked, this is what I know about. So all of those things, like, please feel free to unmute yourself and then just, you know, um, say whatever it is that you want to, that you want to say. So today, um, the learning objectives are to essentially each one of us introduces ourselves, determine whether this club is for you or not, based on what you're going to see about what the Ggplot 2 book is about. Um, but essentially, if you are new, but even if you are a new coder or a sort of experienced coder, 
I highly recommend that you read this book if you want to get better at data visualization using ggplot2. Uh, and we will go over all the different sections of the book too. Uh, so this is the part that we're at right now where every one of you can have the option to introduce yourselves. I don't wanna force anyone, obviously. So let me start. Uh, my name is Gabby. Um, I am currently in College Park, Maryland. I'm a postdoc at the University of uh, Maryland. I'm an ecologist, so I work with wildlife all the time, but I feel like since I, I started this, uh, this postdoc, I have turned into a data scientist. That's more of what I do now than being an ecologist. Uh, so my time zone is uh, Eastern time. I have been in previous uh, DSLC book clubs, yes, and I am an active member of the uh, Slack channel, always asking questions. Um, I have read the R4DS uh, book completely, like we're going to finish that cohort next week, I think. Um, I have read that one. I read the Bayesian uh, book too. Uh, what is it called? something about Bayesian stats, but I um, I read that one. Um, what other book club have I been in? Oh, the uh, the API book with um, that John also started. And I've been jumping in and out of the uh, packages one too. Just, I don't know, it's a little bit over my head. So I, I sometimes I have to skip some, some weeks. That one is already done, but I was joining it for a bit, of, a, a little bit. And I'm here because obviously I am uh, leading this book club. So now I am the uh, cohort lead or cohort manage manager. I don't know what name to use here, but uh, that's me. That only means that I organize this thing, right? Like I don't know anything more or less than you guys. We're all here to learn, um, but I'm just essentially the person in charge of organizing this, this cohort. Um, so yeah, that's me. So if anybody else wants to jump in and introduce yourselves, please do so. Oh, Colin and I both unmuted at the same time, I guess. Go ahead. I guess you I'm go ahead. all right. <laughs> um, hello, uh, my name is Kaya, pronouns are she, her. Um, I am in Los Angeles right now. I'm a PhD student at UCLA. I also study ecology, um, but I'm also sort of more toward the computational side and have been leaning more into that as well. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, so my time zone is uh, Pacific time. And I was previously in the R Packages Club and some of it went over my head, but I think even the parts that did, it was still like helpful to be um, introduced to them. And I came into that one um, as like a total novice or not total novice I, I had tried my hand at developing an R package but like with very little guidance and like didn't really know what I was doing so I was like all right it's time to get some theory and for the ggplot one like I would consider myself like a competent practitioner with ggplot like I use it all the time and I, I make good graphics but I sort of feel like I've plateaued in my understanding of how it actually works so I wanted to read this book because I wanted to get a more like systematic understanding of what's actually going on behind the scenes. And I suspect that that'll help me be even better at um, plotting. Excellent, so I can go next. Uh, so hi, everybody, my name is Colin Berkey. Um, I am not in academia. Um, I am actually on a more kind of industry uh, role. Uh, so right now I am a media research analyst in public media. So I work for a company called, or I work for a public media station called Nebraska Public Media. Uh, I am located in um, Lincoln, Nebraska. So my time zone is the central time zone. Uh, my main role is I do a lot of like marketing analytics, audience research, marketing research, and I use basically R for that kind of work. I've used R for several years now. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with the language. Um, so I'm kind of excited to learn more about ggplot2. Um, I have been in several book clubs before. Uh, started, and I think I was here when when it used to be uh, called R4DS before it was the DSLC. Mm -hmm. So I'm still getting used to the name change. And I haven't been as active this past year um, because work has kind of been um, picking up in pace. And so I haven't had the opportunity to participate in the clubs as of late. But this has always been a book 
um, that I have that's been on my radar to kind of read. Um, because as Kaya said, like I'm a pretty good practitioner of ggplot2. I usually kind of have a general understanding of what I want to do and how to create it. And I've kind of fallen into that kind of cookbook mentality of just like, this is what I want to do, go find something online, put it together and move on. But I would really like to get a better understanding of it, especially from like the statistics side of it, where it's like, where it can do the statistical summaries, because that part, I just do not understand how ggplot does that. So I'm excited for that. Um, I'm also excited just to connect with people in the community. Um, I have really enjoyed my time in this community. Um, I'm not, as like I said, I'm not as active, but I do keep up to date with what's happening in the community and um, been able to kind of follow along in the Slack channel. So it's always great to meet new people and connect with people that are a part of it. So it's really exciting to be a part of this group. Uh, I think that's all I've answered. Uh, other than the other books like uh, our packages, R for DS, Mastering Shiny, uh i think those are the big ones that i've done i'm sure i've done other ones but i just can't remember so but excited to be here all right uh hi everyone i'm ashley reynolds uh pronouns are she her um i am a postdoctoral fellow in ottawa canada um at the canadian museum of nature and the university of ottawa um i I am an evolutionary ecologist, I guess, a trained as a paleontologist, but I work a lot on living things as well. So sort of straddle both worlds. Um, I'm in Eastern time in Ottawa, and this is my first DSLC club. Um, I'm also doing the, the effect, which starts next week. So I'm kind of jumping in with both. I actually heard about the DSLC because I follow Gabby on social media, on Mastodon, and uh, uh, Gabby had talked about, I think it was the, it was the Bayesian book, which I have like saved and want to read through um, as a recommendation. And then just like through you posting about the DSLC, I sort of like started following and seeing what was what. Um, I am competent with R. I've used R since I started grad school in 2015. Um, but I was, you know, partially self-taught and partially taught by people who were self-taught. So I was mostly used base R in probably 2022. I worked my way through uh, most of, I don't think I quite finished it, the, um, the uh, R for data science book because I wanted to use it when I was finishing up my thesis and running my analyses. Um, so I know ggplot and use ggplot from that, but I, I, I've i also read like the original gram, uh, grammar of graphics paper, but um, would definitely like to better understand how ggplot works and get to a point where I have to look things up <laughs> less frequently. Um, uh, and also just like know how to make really pretty functional plots. Um, I've been interested in in data visualization for a while, but just like haven't really had the time to sink my teeth into it. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So that's super exciting that we have three colleges in one book club. I don't think that's ever happened before. I am excited. Colin, you are are also welcome to the world of academia again because you're in industry now. Um, but yeah, this is, this is exciting. Um, okay, so I think that this, um, that this book is gonna be super helpful because I agree with Ashley in the sense that I am also self-taught and I learned a lot of things from people that are self-taught. So I feel like we miss a big chunk of, um, I don't want to say the correct way of doing things, but things that we shouldn't be doing, I feel like that's the way that those things propagate when you learn from self-taught people. Like one of the things is, for example, um, one of my professors used to do like the, all the ggplot code and in the end assign it to an object. When I told that to John once, he was like, no, you don't do that any, ever. You start with the name, assign, 
the rest of the ggplot code, right? So all these biases, I call them. Um, so we learn them because we learn from self-taught people, right? But now that we're in the book, that that's going to give us some structure for that. Okay, so next, um, when you present the chapter, obviously this is a very um, loose format in the sense that you can uh, feel free to present the chapter whichever way you prefer. But I'm going to just give you a few guidelines for things that I have seen um, from my experience in other book clubs and also from how I've seen John do things when he leads a book club. Um, so each member has the opportunity to lead a chapter and however many you want. Um, I recommend focusing on two things. One, the date, and two, the content of the chapter. If it's something that you know that you want to learn more about, but you're not really good at it, this is your opportunity to dive in and really learn this thing that you didn't, uh, that you think you didn't master before. Because it's, um, it's one thing when you are reading it and learning it for you, but then when you present it and explain it to others, that's when the um, a lot of this content like really sticks on your brain, right? And also if it's something that you already know a lot about, it's a chapter that attracts your interest because it's, oh yeah, I know how to do these, uh, these graphs perfectly. I'm gonna present this because you know I am an expert on this. So that's another way of, um, of grabbing a chapter too. Um, but it could be uh, many other reasons why, right? Like those are the main ones that I can think of, but you you do whichever ones um, grab your interest. Um, the other thing is I recommend you use the slides. Try not to use the book when you're presenting. Um, so like I said, all of the chapters have slides. Uh, the thing is most of them are a little too uh, verbose or too wordy right now. So we want to like sort of um, make it a little bit more concise, but it's better to use the slide than going through the book, right? Because remember, we only have one hour and the idea is that all of this book chapter, you sort of read through it and you think these are the parts that I think are the highlights, the things that are worthy to um, talk about with the other uh, book club members, right? So then that's why I recommend using the slides. Try to keep all the content in one visible slide. And by that, I mean this, like what you see here so that you don't have to scroll up and down. Sometimes it happens, especially with the graphs, right? Like you're gonna have the code here and then the graph below. So sometimes it happens, but this is a recommendation that John usually gives, like try to keep all the content in one slide here. Um, and if you need to divide it into, into sections or something, then use another slide. Pick chapters, like I said, that interest you, whichever ones they are, just feel free to pick whichever one and then just sign up in the, um, in the Google Sheets uh, document. When you go to the GitHub uh, repository for this book club, and I have the link here, um, so this is going to be the, the repository. So you want to fork it and then uh, fork it to your own GitHub and then work on that, like create a, a branch. But all of those instructions are right here in the readme. So if you go through this with the how to present, I am not really good at GitHub. And I promise you by following these steps, you will be able to, to do this successfully. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you think you're not really good with GitHub, remember that you can always download, I hope you're seeing this part right here, but this is the, uh, the GitHub desktop. And this is super handy for, um, uh, how do you call this? The pull and the push that you have to do with each one of the projects, um, with it, with, uh, commenting, etc. right? Like all of this commits, sorry, no comments, the commits and all of that. This is super easy. If you download the GitHub um, desktop, you don't even have to deal with your tokens. You don't have to deal with none of that thing because the desktop does it for you. Um, so I highly recommend that. And if you're in doubt, then go over these instructions with um, the how to present part on the GitHub that John has already put together for all of us. 
Um, okay, so now where are, did I lose my, I think I did. Oh, it's probably going back here, okay. Um, and then if you noticed, I started this uh, chapter by introducing the chapter by the name of the book and then uh, the cohort, the chapter and my name. So that's a little bit so that we, because obviously when this is uploaded to YouTube, the person seeing this video recording sort of understands what's happening, right? Um, and then uh, let's start talking about the book. So this is the part, um, this is just three slides that I have that introduce us to the book and it's part of the introduction in the book. So let's go through this. So. Welcome to GPA 2. So this is based, like um, Ashley was saying, uh, has the underlying grammar that it's based on the grammar of graphics by Wilkinson in 2005. So Hadley based all of this universe essentially, this GGPA 2 on that grammar of graphics. What is that? So this is essentially uh, the way that you compose graphs by combining independent components. And that's like all of the pluses that you see on the, um, on the code when you do GitHub, those are the different components. And that's like the grammar of graphics. There are five, if I'm not mistaken, there are five uh, main components and we're gonna go through those in a little bit. So you can produce publication quality graphics in seconds. I don't know if in seconds, the book says seconds. Let's just say if you already did it and then you wanna redo it, yes, in seconds. All time is divisible into seconds. So yes. <laughs> I love that you can make a, a graph in 5,000 seconds or in 5 million. That's right. <laughs> so, yes. Um, sometimes there's oh, some graphs take so long, so long, right? But anyway. Um, but it's true that ggplot comprehensive theming system makes it so easy to do exactly what you want to do. Um, so, yeah, I, I, at least for me and the way my brain works, like ggplot. I understand it so well, but anyway. So ggplot2 GG is also designed to work iteratively. So that means that you start with a layer that shows the raw data, and then you add other layers for annotations, statistical summaries, the theme, etc. cetera. Right? You, you, you're building up on those layers. So the grammar of graphics also tell us about um, the graphic maps, uh, the data to the aesthetic attribute so that you can um, control the color, the shape, the sizes, and the geometric objects, which are gonna be the points, the lines, the bars, um, the curves, anything that you have in your uh, graph. So all of those things are uh, controlled here by the graph. The plot can also include statistical transformations for the data that you have, and you can do that inside DigiPlot, right? Like you don't necessarily have to do that transformation outside. And you can also control the coordinate system. We usually work with the Cartesian coordinate system, which is the X, Y, uh, or Z, if you have 3D too. Uh, but you also can work in polar, uh, in polar coordinates, so you can do circular graphs, et cetera. And the last part here is the faceting that you can also use to subset parts of the data so that you can show one part in one facet and another part in another so these mapping components, and we're gonna go through this obviously um, through the different chapters, but essentially ggplot works on this five basic mapping components. And this is so easy to understand if you just, um, and I would say even four, just by thinking, okay, these are the four things that I need to look out for, then you have your, 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 uh, your, your graph ready and done. So first, we start with the layer, which is a collection of geometric elements and statistical transformations, or geoms for short. So the geom point, the geom bar, the geom column, that's like the first part. Well, we start with ggplot, right? Like, and then the layer. So this is going to control what exactly type of graphic you want to do. Bars, lines, um, box plots, etc. Then the scale is going to map the values in the data space to values in the aesthetic space. So, for example, if you want to control color, if you want to control the type of um, 
of little, if you're doing points and you want to say, oh, well, I want little cuts or I want points or I want triangles, all of those things are controlled with the scale too. So all those values in the data space transform, or not transform, but understood in the aesthetic space. That's what the scale does. And then you have the chord, uh, the coordinate system, which is going to describe the, the planes, the coordinates in the plane of the graphic. Then we go to facets, which is exactly when you break up your data set into small multiples. And there are two, which is the facet grid and the facet wrap. You choose whichever. And then finally, the theme, which is my favorite one. This one controls the way overall the graph looks like. If you wanted to have a dark color, like a black color or a very dark gray, um, background so that it's not like a white uh, uh, a white background. If you want to have the grid, if you want to have multiple lines for the grid, if you want to have the legend to the left, to the bottom, etc. All of that is controlled by the theme. And I think the theme is the most, it's my favorite one, but it's the most tricky one if you don't know exactly what each part controls. And when we get there, I'll show you my favorite cheat sheets for theme that when you have it, and I have it here printed on my desk, it's like this cheat sheet shows you exactly the theme. So you don't even have to um, worry about remembering it because the cheat sheet gives you exactly everything you need to know. It's super handy because the theme has so many um, parts. So these are all the chapters. It has 22 chapters, if I'm not mistaken. But overall, Chapter two is going to introduce us to several important ggplot2 concepts. For example, what are the mapping concepts, the mapping components, the GMs, the aesthetic mappings, the faceting, the theme, all of that. We see the all of those uh, components in chapter two. Then from chapter three to nine, we're going to explore how to use the basic toolbox. And you can see them here, the names, right? The basic uh, toolbox to solve a wide range of visualization problems that you're most likely going to encounter when you are practicing. So for example, when you have collective geoms, when you're doing the statistical summaries that I think Colin was referring to, when you have uh, maps, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. how do you do that? How do you arrange your plots? How do you add annotations? So all of those uh, toolbox that are going to um, improve the way your graph looks like. And then from chapter 10 to 12, this is going to show you how to control the most important scales, allowing you to tweak the details of access and legends. So that would be the color scales and the legends and other aesthetics and um, how to build a plot layer by layer. Chapter 13, uh, the additional layers to your plot, which are going to be scales and guides. Um, and then I think, I don't know why they, they had it separate in these two parts, like the 10 and the 12. Other things that you're going to learn on chapters 10 to 12 are going to be what scales are available to adjust your parameters. Um, then section 13.7, which is specifically for this chapter of scales and guides, you're going to see the faceting, like exactly what does that mean to subset your data into different facets or different uh, mini components. Right? And then chapter 17, 17, which is, this is where the good thing really, really good thing starts to happen because then we go to the advanced topics, which are programming with ggplot2. If you want to create functions, if you want to um, do more programming stuff with ggplot, not necessarily just chop, uh, chop, um, graph by graph, right? And then chapter 18 is going to internals of ggplot2, extending ggplot2 in case you want to do your own ggplot package how do you how do you come about right like if you want to do an extension of ggplot by building your own package and then we go to a case study which i haven't read actually so i'm not really sure what that is about um these are all the packages that we are going to be working with in addition to ggplot2 and we may introduce others if, in case you're introducing a chapter and you think that this is a great time to introduce, for example, um, a package that talks about, I don't know, a specific um, color palette or it talks about themes or something like that, feel free to introduce it, right? Like we're all here to learn from all, from all of us and what better way to introduce new packages to people that are interested in ggplot2 than this 
culture or this uh, book cohort. Um, so anyway, that's it. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. I guess at some point our videos are going to be embedded here too. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything that you want to contribute here or. Uh, um, I have a question want. actually. Mm -hmm. um, so in the our packages book, we almost exclusively use the slides. Um, but I was wondering whether you've seen people actually like go into our studio and sort of do a more interactive follow along thing on a oh, yeah. um, markdown document. Like, is that something that could do? I feel like especially for plotting, it could be really helpful. I think, yeah, that's a great suggestion, Kaya, because I thought um, I was just thinking more of don't do this, like go through the book and then go through the different parts, like more. I prefer if you use the slide. But you're right. Sometimes we're going to have to jump into, yeah, you guys, this is, let's open R and let's code this in here so that we immediately can see the graph next to it. I think that's a great suggestion. Kaya. Yes, I agree with you. I think in past cohorts, we've, I think it's, I think it's a good exercise to do that. Cause I think if you see people working through the problems, I think it's very helpful to actually see it. Um, there's two things that I would say is if we do do that, um, I know in the recording sometimes like the text can be really, really small. So if we do jump into it, just be aware that like with the recording, sometimes the text gets really, really small. So there might be people outside that will want to watch it later. Um, if we do do that, just make sure like the text is large enough is kind of the big thing. And then I think um, also just like if you have some examples, like if you're looking to lead, I think it's always been helpful to have. Obviously, the live coding is really good, but it's also really nice like if you have some examples set ahead of time, I think really helps because we only have an hour. And um, if having some examples really makes it more efficient. But yeah, that's just my input on it from past cohorts. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion, Colin, because sometimes if the book is just talking about doing this, like, for example, one thing, maybe you want to, uh, based on your experience or what you read through the book, maybe it would be good to add either another panel or add something else, a, a few more lines of code here to sort of like uh, illustrate the point that you were trying to make. And you can do that ahead of time so that we don't live code because we only have one hour. So I agree with you. I think that's good. And the increase in the font size, I think that's also important because um, if we go to tools and then global options, very easily we can go to appearance and then we can do the editor font size. Let's do 14, for example, apply OK. And then you can say, is this font better for everyone? And if someone gives you the thumbs up, then you can proceed with that one. That's the one I usually go for, like 14, I think it's a good size, but sometimes people may prefer 16 or something. But I think 14 is, is a good way to go. But that's a good reminder. I'm gonna put it in the, here in the presenter chapter, I'm gonna add these suggestions that you both gave uh, right now. Thank you. I think the other thing too is, because I know I'm here with three ecologists, if there is like a like specific data set that you would also like to apply some of these examples to, I would be happy to, um, I know there might be other people joining, but um, with the majority of people being ecologists, if there's like a, a simplified data set that we could use for examples throughout the book, I'm happy to um, participate in that as well. But that would be a group decision. But I think also having like outside data to emphasize the examples also kind of helps as well. Yeah, and the good thing is that, um, yeah, we don't know all the time I have to talk about animals or plants. I promise you, Colin, we are not going to bore you with that. We have all of the um, Tidy Tuesday data set that's um, available, too. So we can actually um, pick a few of those. And then, um, so I've done a few Tidy Tuesdays, and I have them in my blog. I just, I just haven't, I mean, work has been a little crazy, and I didn't keep up with it. But I think um, that's also another good thing to remember. So we have all of those data sets in case someone wants to um, use them for examples of the chapter that they're presenting, or if they have specific questions, because that's another thing that happens sometimes is that you can say, oh, we're talking here about, let's say, uh, scatter plots. 
but then you say, I've always had this specific question about it, and then someone else can jump in and walk you through it. But if you have an example already previously done, like I don't understand this part, then that makes it easier for others to also answer that question. Um, and maybe this can also be like a, a an opportunity to explore repositories that other people have done in Tidy Tuesday to see how they have done, for example, annotations or how they have arranged different plots um, into one into one uh, plot, let's say, how they arrange them. So that's another good thing to, to do. Um, I think all of the main um, social media, not just X, but also um, Mastodon, they also have like the hashtag for Tidy Tuesday and on uh, Blue Sky 2. So then uh, that's another good thing to, to start seeing. I've learned a lot from following people um, on Tidy Tuesday and seeing how they have done uh, different things, right? Um, some of those graphs that they produce are like super fancy pants. And I'm like, I wanna learn how to do that too. So that's, um, that's also another good resource. Um, and yeah, to avoid, obviously, um, talking just about penguins and talking about, you know, tigers and things that ecologists are interested in. So, yeah, I promise, Colin, we won't bore you with that. <laughs> just that. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'm certainly I'm certainly open to all those things. Um, and I also don't want to add more workload. So don't don't think I'm expecting external examples either. So obviously, but I've just found that, like, adding examples to it has been very helpful in past cohorts. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to raise that as, you know, potential for this group to explore. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, um, no, it's a good idea. I mean, if, if you're tight on time, then do it. But if you, if you, if you can, then yeah, go ahead and do it. Um, so yeah, I think that's it, you guys, unless there's something else that you want to discuss or, or that you have questions about. I so don't think I have it. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, just I just wanted to say that um, I wanted to make sure because each chapter ends in exercises. So we usually focus on the content of the chapter, but I am I'm not sure if you guys want to also go over the exercise of, for each ch chapter or at least a few of the exercises in the final 10 minutes of the hour or if we should just forget about the exercises because i think, I think each chapter have... sorry yeah? i didn't realize you weren't no, done no, talking about that um I, I was gonna say i think it's gonna depend on the chapter um but i was just looking at that geoms exercise that you had pulled up and like i actually yeah, I feel like even for some of the more basic chapters, chapters, or maybe especially for some of the more basic chapters, it would be kind of interesting to go over the, because I was looking at it, I was like, you know, do I actually know off the cuff which geome to use for all of those immediately? Like, I'm not even sure the answer is yes. It could be useful, but we may not have time to do it every single time. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it would, I think oh, it would be mm -hmm. useful. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think it would be useful to have, like, like you said, maybe 10 minutes to be like, did anybody have any like problems or questions with the exercises? At least speaking for myself, my plan is to go through the exercises for each of the chapter and try to use like data sets that are relevant to my own research. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily like presenting those and making you all like obsess about cats, but um, <laughs> uh definitely for for anything that like has I have data sets that are relevant which I think I do for most of what we have um that's sort of my plan so it'd be useful to have a space where it's like oh I was trying to do this uh does anybody know like why this wasn't working or whatever yeah I think we can leave that for the last 10 minutes 15 10 minutes depends on if it's true like a very elaborate question I think that's that's good Ashley thank you and yeah, do the examples that are best for you. Um, I'm just I just reminded everyone that we have the Tidy Tuesday data sets. And I'm gonna post the link in the uh, notes too for this chapter. Um, 
but um, but yeah, I mean, if you already have your own examples of, I don't know, tigers in Sumatra, and that's what you're working on, go ahead and use that. I mean, whatever is easier for you. Um, yeah, and I, I think, so I have like three or four people that I follow on these Tidy Tuesdays that do amazing graphs. So I'm also gonna post those um, GitHub repositories um, so that, you know, it's always good to sort of see how other people are coding and to get inspiration, et cetera. For me, especially for those annotations that sometimes I don't even know how to do, and I've learned a lot from, from following them. So I'm gonna make sure to um, to link my favorite um, Tidy Tuesdayers. I don't know if that's the word to use for a person that does Tidy Tuesday, the Tidy Tuesdayer. Anyway, um, so yeah. So, so I think I think that's it, you guys. Unless anyone else has any other comment, I was just wondering if if anybody who is here has like particular topics or chapters that they already know they're really interested in presenting. Okay, let's switch to this just so that we can like if if you like two people want to like really want to do a chapter like we can kind of hash that out or like if anybody has something that's really relevant to something they're doing right now they can maybe like claim it <laughs> so i love themes so let me claim that one and then mm -hmm. yeah that's good um i don't know if i'd like I'm so interested in another one i have to think about it um i do social networks so i would i theoretically would like the networks chapter, although that date may not work for me, actually. Yeah, I think that's a date that I can't do. Darn. Um, so never mind. But we can move it. We can skip a week and then move it either. We can rearrange. Yeah, yeah, um, if that's best for you. Because I would okay. like to know if, if you're about like if you're an expert on networks. Yeah, I want to. I wouldn't say I an expert, but I, I do them for my PhD. So that could be useful. Um, then you're an expert. Okay. <laughs> More of an um, yeah. yeah, I would I would like that chapter if we can move it. Um, I'm just not I have a two day workshop that's going to be that day. So I can't do that. Okay. okay. So let's um, Kaya, can I ask you if you can put a comment on the Slack of okay. the Digiplot book club Slack and let John sure. know so that he can rearrange it because he doesn't like it when others okay. settle with the, <laughs> with, the, with the Excel sheet. Uh, hi, John, if you're listening, we all love you, but we understand that it's best if you control that. Uh, okay. In the Actually, past, yeah. have in the past, have people just like flipped weeks? Like, could you do uh, like the networks chapter first and then do maps? Maybe. Mm, yeah, like yeah, I would that assume that awesome. some depend on each other, but maybe yeah. not all of them. Like networks and annotations probably don't depend on each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we can, yeah, we can switch those if yeah. you if you want. Um, unless if if some of the other people are like actual like work on GIS or like our geographers or something, uh, then you know it might be better to have them present. But I've got some some um mapping problems that i would like to think about so i can take maps yeah okay claim that one yeah sounds good and i think take... blood is not yeah holly yeah which one would you take? oh i i will take statistical summaries because that was like the one thing that has always bothered me about ggplot too <laughs> so i want to learn <laughs> more was... about that i was hoping you'd say that yes because i don't want to do that one <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I'm a full expert. I don't have a, a complete statistics background, but I just want to learn that chapter more for sure. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm going to uh, let you also explore like the book on your own time, and then maybe you are like interested in annotations, but you're like, oh, but I don't really know what that is. So then maybe in your own time you can go through the book and say oh well, yeah this is something that i'm interested in let me claim it right like you don't we don't have to claim all the um all the chapters now except maybe for next weeks so if anyone is interested in these first steps um please
claim it. So first steps is essentially, where is it? Uh, let me, uh, my, my next week is pretty slammed. So I don't know if I'll be able to have the opportunity to put it together, but I would be happy to take individual geomes um, after. Okay. So if somebody could take first steps next week, that'd be great. Because my following week will be a lot better after the that week of the 17th. Yeah, okay. So first step is going to be, mm -hmm. I think, he's just talking about going through some exercises. And uh, yeah, it's like just a very basic thing, I think. Um, so yeah, if nobody wants it, I can take it, of course, because that's why I'm the lead chapter person. <laughs> um i can I, take it for sure um yeah i can probably take it i'm thinking i have i have to i have to do some graphs for papers so maybe working through it will force me to actually do work <laughs> that i'm supposed to do <laughs> sounds good thank you ashley so, yeah just write write down your name or if you want me to write it down i can uh yeah i will write it down i'm just like i don't know i'm having for some reason, I can't find the uh, the link to the the sign up sheets. Oh, let me put it here on the chat. There you go. I I noticed that the in the bookmarks, the link to the YouTube playlist comes before the chapter sign up. I wonder if we could switch those, but maybe only John has permission to do that. Yeah, I think I think we can switch it, but I haven't been. You know, I don't want to mess with John's organization. But I also, yeah, I don't know why you have to leak, uh, click these three dots and then you go to the claim and chapter. This should be before, like the join a new cohort. Yes, great, but you know, it's, this one is more important than the other one. Um, so yeah, I think I, I don't know. I think it's just the screen size because I have it open on my uh, browser and it's like full width and I can see all. Oh, of you're right. <laughs> Um, Sorry about that. I just apparently don't know how to read and read claim. Like I was looking for sign up, not claim a chapter, and so my brain was just like, I can't find the link. It's not there. <laughs> but I found. It. <laughs> <All good. laughs> Sometimes, yeah, John uses fun names. It's okay. <laughs> it totally makes sense. I was just like, brain, no word. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, so then at least we have the following two weeks covered and then, yeah, we will go through this little by little. So if anybody has anything else to add, if not, we can just um, call it a day. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, you guys. See you next week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.